You know what? I get to consider you that we see through internet, that we see through TV. I get to consider all of you friends. Hi, I'm Pastor Ron Carpenter, and I get to host Redemption with Ron Carpenter. And we're going to have you these next few minutes with us. But you know what? We have, we have several campuses right here. We broadcast out of Greenville, South Carolina, have campuses over the Carolinas. But when we get on TV, we get to extend our net to have relationships all over the world. I hope you consider us a friend too. I hope we make a positive impact on your life. That's the reason we do what we do. I want to let you know that I've, I'm still in this 11-week series called What Makes a Man. And uh, it was so long that we divided it into four segments. And we're now in the third part of that segment of What Makes a Man called Elevate. And I talked out of Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to talk about the theme of management. God cannot bring harvest that we cannot manage. So I have to enlarge my capacity to lead. I have to enlarge my capacity to grow. You know what? I have to manage everything. God will expect me to manage my mind, to manage my thoughts, to manage my feelings, to manage my relationships, to manage my resources, manage my time, manage my money. Management is very important. The Bible talks about him. Luke 19, how the, the unjust steward, he went away and then came back to see what they had done or what he had given them. Well, God has given me all these things and I have to manage them properly to hear these words. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a little matter. Take ruler. Everybody wants to rule their world, but it's going to take learning how to manage your world to do it. Let's talk about this series called Elevate. I believe your life's about to go higher. I'll see you again in just a moment. In the Bible, God made Adam, put him in a garden, and told him the garden was his responsibility, and taught him the rules, the boundaries, and gave him all the instructions. Eve was not even there yet. So then God says, it's not good for man to be alone. Says, I'm going to make a helper suitable for him. So Eve comes and God intended for the man to receive instruction from God. I'm giving you the divine pattern of the home right now. God operates in patterns. Here is the pattern. The intention was that God give the man the instructions for the home. Now you already see how out of whack we are right there because most households and most churches are run by women. And most marriages, if they are still together, the man is dependent on the woman to hear from God. Yeah, it's quiet in this Holy Ghost filled church. People want this series to be over with after today. <laughs> God, I don't know. Please don't take this the wrong way. God didn't speak to Eve. He does talk to women. He talks to everybody today. But look at the divine pattern of the home. God spoke to Adam and told Adam, these are my instructions. Then Eve is made. God intended for the man to get the instructions from God and then teach the things of God and the ways of God, the laws of God and the commands of God to the woman and to the children. Because if you go all the way back to the first Sunday, remember, it's not just the children who are the men's offspring, it is actually the woman who is the man's offspring. Because Eve came out of Adam, and 1 Corinthians 11 says, remember, man did not come from woman, woman came from man. And the Bible told the man, said, now a man shall leave his father and his mother. But never is a, man, a woman told to leave a father and a mother. Because a woman was never meant to be without a father. She was supposed to move from a father to a husband. Woman was never meant to be without a covering. God never told the woman to leave a father. He only told the man to...
I can tell this is so far in because I can feel it coming back. At, I can preach and feel stuff coming back at me. I know it. Need to turn around and tell some of these other people I'm preaching. You're telling me you need to tell them I'm preaching. Because some of you look mad. Listen, I didn't write this book. As far as protector and provider, the man who marries a woman slides into the father role even of the woman. So woman was never meant to be without a covering. And it leaves a woman in a vulnerable place when she feels like she has nothing above her to provide and to protect for her. But God told the man to leave a father and a mother. Why? Because a man is now challenged to become what he has been taught by. Now we have a generation that never was taught by it, so they never become it. Is this this bad? I wish y'all could see y'all's faces. Y'all don't look like y'all in church. Y'all look like y'all been drinking sour persimmon juice. Is this all right? The woman was built to be a receptor. The man was meant to be an investor. The man releases, the woman receives. Biologically and spiritually. That is something that is consistent and is not broken. It's supposed to be continued as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. The man was supposed to instruct, the woman was supposed to receive. Now, ladies, let me tell you something. It is you, you were built, ladies. It is not your job, I said that wrong. You are built to take what has been sown in you, multiply it, and give it back. That's the way you are built. Ladies, you have tremendous ability to multiply. Tremendous ability. I've always said a woman is like a bank. You can invest in her and she will pay you back with interest. You can give a woman a little bit of love and she'll turn around and give you a whole lot of love. You can give a woman a little bit of attention and she has the ability to turn around and give you a whole lot of attention. So whatever a man sows into a, a man sows a seed into a woman's womb and she takes it and multiplies that seed and turn around and hands him a baby. Oh, good God of money. Uh, you, can, you can sow a little bit of love and she'll turn around and multiply back to you love and hand it back to you. You can give sow into her a little bit of joy and she will turn around and hand you multiplied joy. You can, turn, you can sow into her a little bit of honor and she'll multiply it and return unto you a whole lot of honor. May I go further? You can invest in her a little bit of trouble and she can turn around and give you a whole lot of trouble. You can invest in her a little bit of hell and she can turn around and give you up. Preach it, pastor! Mm. Mm. Some of you ladies need to look around and say, be careful what you put in me. Be careful what you. I see the men all of a sudden become very afraid. (laughs) You know, I believe the greatest investment you can make is the investment of your mind. Because the Bible makes it clear wherever your mind goes, your life goes. That's powerful what I just dropped on you. Wherever your mind goes, your life goes. So if I want my life to go there, my mind's going to have to go there first. You've been hearing this subject of what makes a man. This is the entire 11-week series, but it's been broken into segments. You're now hearing the elevate portion of what makes a man is what you're hearing right now. I would love for you to have these. And uh, these are available in our online bookstore through our app, myredemption.cc. You can go to either one. And for the entire CD or DVD set, which includes four, they're $30 per set. 
You know what? We're now into our third part. We've got who shepherds me. So we've got what makes a man. We've got who shepherds me and we've got elevate. All three of them we'd offer you for $75. You know what? When I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm riding down the road, and I know we have iPod, we have podcasts, we offer all that, but sometimes you have the mechanisms where you have to use CDs or you want to see it through a DVD. We'd love for you to have these to archive that you can pull on them whenever you need encouragement at any time. How do you constantly drive out the doubt with a constant flow of information going in? Would love for you to have them. Call now and order. God told Isaiah it is his desire that every house have a covering of glory. Every house. But glory comes with understanding and obeying patterns. Okay. So I'm giving you the pattern. Now, the law was broken. Eve's source of instruction was supposed to be her husband. <clears throat> Remember, the Bible says, wives, be subject to your own husbands. <laughs> was that funny? I didn't have that written down as funny right here in my notes. I just said. You ain't got to be subject to nobody else's husband. It did not say females be subject to males. <laughs> Somebody said, what you say? No. It said, wife, be subject to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Meaning there are going to be times it is not easy to be subject to him. But like and as are similes. So in other words, when you're, when you're being subject to him, even when it's difficult, don't do it as unto him. Do it as unto the Lord. So you do it pretending he's not the guy who cut his toenails and left them on the couch. You do it pretending that he's Jesus the whole time you're doing it. Is this all right? I'm, I'm preaching. And you wonder why nobody preaches on this stuff anymore. I'm trying to find the right way to say it. Wives be subject to In other words, <coughs> the instruction that Eve got, God intended for Adam to turn around and teach the family. Eve included and the children. God said this was ours. It is our responsibility. It responds to our words. We are to honor God's commands. There is a tree in the middle of the garden. God says, don't touch that tree. He said, every other tree we could eat from. And you know, in this family, we honor God. So let's obey. Now, it's up to Eve to make sure that is carried out. I'll prove it for all the women that did not say nothing right then. Okay. God gives the instruction to the man, the man teaches the family. So if Eve does not know that they're not supposed to eat of that tree, it's Adam's fault. If your kids don't know right and wrong, it's traced back to man. If your wife don't know, it's chased back. And like I said, even when it ain't your fault, it is your. Okay, I'm going somewhere. You're going to give me a little more time. I ain't through yet. Tap your neighbor say, give him a little more time. Go on. Now Eve goes and the serpent starts talking. She is not supposed to receive instruction from anyone but Adam. So she goes to a different place to receive instruction. And the serpent says, well, that's not really what God meant. And if you eat of this tree, you're going to be like God. You'll be fine. It's not what you think it is. So she received seed from another source. 
It is the man's job to sow the seed. It is the woman's seed. It is the woman's job to multiply the seed and give birth to what the seed had in it. Now, Adam was supposed to put in her the seeds of life, and she's supposed to turn around and give birth to the things that pertain unto life. But now she has received instruction or seeds of death, so now she's going to incubate it and turn around, and Adam and Eve are going to give birth to Cain and Abel, which is the first murder. So when her source of instruction changed, she incubated something different. And instead of birthing life, maybe we need to turn the last one into a woman's message. Since I ain't got no women throwing hankies on women's preaching day. Y'all been throwing hankies while I've been talking about the men, but now I done gotten your stuff Receive what Adam said, incubate it, give birth to life. Receive what the serpent said, incubate it, give birth to death. So now children that were supposed to operate and give birth to life as the instruction came from God to Adam to Eve to the children. Now Eve switched sources and now she gave birth to Cain and Abel. Cain slays his brother and in the very first family... We've got murder because the wages of sin is death. And you trace it back all the way to receiving instruction from the wrong place. I'm doing my best. I got a little bit further to go. Turn around and tell two or three people, say, he's talking to you today. He's talking to you. Come on. He's talking to you. <clears throat> now, today, we have women being the heads of households. Come on, let's talk. I didn't say I'm getting on you. I'm saying we got to set the standard. If you, you don't know what to make a goal if you don't know what the goal is. We're trying to correct this. We have a generation with no fathers so we have a generation with no instruction. So we have women giving commands to children with no instruction from a father. So when the woman gives the instruction, the boundaries are not kept because there's no sense of authority in the house because the authority was supposed to come from the male and not the female. I'm preaching real good. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 31 that the woman is not the visionary for the house. She doesn't receive the instruction for the house. The Bible says that she watches over her house. So in other words, the man gets the vision, gets the instruction, and the woman carries out the command. There's a difference between instruction and command. The man gets the directive from God. That's what instructions are. You're giving me a directive. Then it is the man's job when he provides for the woman to give the command, the directive that the father has received out. Then it is understanding that as the children honor and obey their parents, that their life may be long upon the earth. In other words, God said, I'll make it real easy for you to live a long time. Just follow the instruction that you heard your mama say, that she heard your dad say, that he heard God say. So when the kids hear mama, they really hearing God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so now... We have kids in a generation when they hear a command, there's no sense of authority behind it, so now we have lawlessness. We have a generation that has cast off restraint and they run wild. Because when they only hear the female voice, they do not hear a sense of authority behind that voice. I gotta tell you, I only remember my mom spanking me one time ever in my life and it was because I went and got on the lawnmower when she told me not to because I was too young. 
I remember it. And she did not spank me with her hand. I remember she got a switch. Y'all don't even know what a switch is. Y'all be calling the police if you saw somebody getting spanked with a switch. I mean to tell you, she tore my legs all to pieces. I looked like a leper when she got through with me. But my mama did not have to be the authority. It is difficult to, for a woman to be a nurturer, which is her call, and beat them at the same time. I'm going to beat your behind. Come here, let me hug you now. So my mom would say, this is what your dad said. And if I disobeyed what dad said, all she had to say was, now when your daddy gets home. Oh, daddy's coming home. You know how to ruin a day? When at 9.30 in the morning, you get told daddy's coming home and he don't get home till six. And you got to go all day long knowing that the heavy hand of your daddy is coming down on you. Right when he walks in, oh, that's a long day. <laughs> now, For something to be consistent, all the types and patterns have to line up. The Bible calls Jesus a groom. The Bible calls you a bride of Christ, the bride of the groom. The groom, the father, gives you the instructions. And what I've been trying to teach you for years, when you understand your place, I don't go around begging God to give me what he says is mine. I just command it to come to me. Whew, a lot of y'all need to come on Wednesday night and you'd understand all that. I don't have to go and pray and beg God for what the Father has already told me is mine. My groom has already told me his bride everything that is mine and I have all the instructions. Now it is not my job to instruct, it is my job to command as I have been instructed. And the church is supposed to operate just like a home and the home is supposed to operate just like a church. And just like I receive my instruction from God and then I speak out of my mouth what God has instructed me and then as I speak it out of my mouth the authority of my father is executed in my life. Your home, the father is supposed to hear from God. Speak into the wife then it's turned around and it's birthed through the children and whatever God in heaven wanted now is supposed to be operating in your house is anybody beginning to see the light come on of how God wanted the church to work how God wanted me to work how God wanted you to work how God wants the home to work and I know a lot of men in here are having a problem with me telling you that you are the bride of Christ but I don't care how many weights you lift and how macho you are you still God's girl To identify what is in you that God wants to live, you are going to have to die to what you want to do so that it can manifest in your lifetime. Ron Carpenter's latest series, Living Inside Out, helps you push past the boundaries that are keeping you from God's call on your life and help you obtain the blessings that are meant for you. But I hear something big even though I see something small. I may have a small wallet, but my vision is big. And don't get caught up, neighbor, in what you see. If you could just hear what I hear. Ron Carpenter has dedicated five messages to the subject of Living Inside Out. Available on CD or DVD for just $35. Order now and we will throw in free shipping within the continental United States. Call, write, or visit roncarpenter.com. Order today. You know what, as we close out today, I hope that you're enjoying this series and 
The feedback has been telling us that you have. I think it's been two things. I think it's been inspiring and challenging at the same time. It's been very interesting to know that the response has been just as much, if not more, female than male. That's a good thing. As male, we need a model. What does God want us to be and do? Females need to know what to look for in a man. So in both areas, it's positive. You know what? As we part today, I want to take a moment and just thank you for everything that you do. If you have a local vision, it takes local resources. If you have a national vision, it takes national resources. If you have a worldwide vision, it takes worldwide resources. We've cast our net here at Redemption into the whole earth, literally to try to speak anywhere into the whole earth in as many languages as we can get it in. It takes work, it takes people, it takes people who are gifted, talented, and expertise. It takes buying time, it takes extreme technology, it takes high def technology, it takes engineering, and the list goes on. I make no bones about it, no gimmicks, no games, I need your help. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner with us? Would you consider, you say, maybe I'm not ready to make that commitment, would you consider a one-time gift? to help us do what we do. We are a listener-supported, a viewer-supported TV program. And we so desperately would love for you to join and lock arms with us so that we can do a much better job of what we do and take this gospel of the kingdom, yes, the kingdom message, into the whole earth. For your first month's gift of any amount, you determine in your heart what God would have you to do. We've got something we're going to send you, this offer right here. We want to send this to you as a gift to let you know that we're just saying thank you. And we're givers also. We want to give back to let you know we value you and we appreciate what you do. And maybe this word can encourage your life. Thank you so much. You know, these little phones are amazing. I get constantly more and more amazed every day because I've lived in a lifetime where this didn't exist. And when it does, I'd like for you to connect with me on a deeper level. Set up a Facebook account. Set up a Twitter account. Instagram. I try to give inspirational messages all day. I try to get, give little nuggets that come to my mind. And every once in a while, I just cut up a little bit and act a little bit of foolishness and let you in on that too. Because it's good to be normal sometime. Sometime I'm not Pastor Ron. Sometime I'm just Ron. Would love to connect with you on that level. Go now. Get in touch with me on a deeper level. I would love to connect with you that way. Until next time, I'm just believing the best for your life. And I'll see you again real soon. God bless. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. And we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.